Hey, welcome back to Biz Talk TV. I'm your business host and guide, Michael Rager. Hey, we're going to talk books and bookkeeping with Nora. Nora, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Michael? Oh, I'm doing great. Okay, this is one of the things. It's funny. We were just talking about loving your numbers with the last two people around here. So it's, it's, it's just great that we got you here right now. So let's talk about bookkeeping and what happens. So what are some of the common bookkeeping mistakes that small businesses make and how can they be avoided? So one big mistake, actually not doing bookkeeping. So that's the first one. They think it's a luxury. The second one is not starting right with the bookkeeping because what they do usually, they just start like connecting their accounts to their software or whatever. And then they're not actually setting the charts of accounts. You have to identify what the charts of accounts, what you need to record on what. Basically, it's, for example, like this is for marketing. So that's an account. Marketing is an account. Uh, sales is an account. You know, if you want, if how you want to see your numbers. So do you want to see the, how do you want to see the breakdown for the sales? Do you want to see like per piece? Do you want to see, for example, if you have different services, for example, I will just use my business as an example. Like, do I want to see tax planning alone and then tax preparation alone? Or I just want to see them as one service. So you have to set a chart of account correctly. And then a lot of people, when they use softwares, for example, they do a lot of duplicates because they don't know how to use the software. Um, so this is a big mistake we see. They overestimate their revenue this way. Another way to overestimate the revenue is when they take a loan, what happened is they record that as a revenue. So they end up paying uh, taxes on their loan while they shouldn't have. So this is most common mistakes I've seen with my clients and I've spoken to a lot of actually tax and accounting professional and they see the same exact thing. So it's very common. So, Yeah, I know myself as I, I really look at my clients, uh, especially their P&L statements and where they go so we can help them. You know, I'm, I'm really fixated on gross profit margin. That's where I want my clients to look at because I want mm -hmm. to understand exactly how the, how the business operates. And they, they really have a hard time with COGS, cost of goods sold. How do you help them you know, do that in the chart of accounts? Because I see so many of them, if they're using QuickBooks or Xero or Wave, that they don't get it. They, they, they just really don't get how cost of goods sold is separate from like our fixed costs and, and going from there. So how do you help them there? And so, I offer something like just to set their uh, chart of accounts. So I tell them, okay, even if you don't want to hire me for a month by month or hire a bookkeeper for a month to month, just make sure you set it right. Because what happens is like we meet with the client and see, okay, what do you want to see? And okay, what's the direct cost for your um, business? So basically that's the cost of goods sold. Like if you need, for example, if you have a, bakery right like you want to flour is a cost of goods sold um that's just an example so anything that you need directly to make the product or the service you're offering that is cost of goods sold so if you have your charts of accounts set correctly just hire someone to do it for you correctly. Like we meet with the client, ask them exactly what they need to see, what they have, what's the cost involved. And then like we do the charts of account with numbers and everything. Because also I don't like a number charts of account because simply if you can mess up accounts, but if you know the number, you know, this is not the right number. So you're not gonna you know it like over time, but over time you're going to, um, you're going to memorize those numbers and you will see, you will catch mistakes because it's so easy to make mistakes because it's kind of boring, right? <laughs> to do it. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you that those chart of accounts and understanding is, is it. And you know, when I teach my clients, it's COGS goes to anything that I spend money on because I sold something, you mm -hmm. know, and my fixed costs are things that I've got to pay no matter whether I sold something or not. And if we can get them to understand that, I think that gets away, you know, 50% of the problem. But then it comes to the next thing is reconciliation. And I was telling you before we got out of air, like I'm the worst reconciler. I wait till like 
you know, January of the year after to start reconciling. How often should we be, you know, reconciling for, you know, our, our, our business? How, how often should we be checking everything? It should be a monthly reconciliation. So that's when reconciliation happens every month. Once you get your bank statement or your credit card statement or your loan statements, anything that you need to reconcile, you have to do it on a monthly basis. So usually like in the you know first day or second day of the month, you will get those statements. So you start to do reconciliation because if you do not do the reconciliation, you're not going to have an accurate report. So how can you know your gross margin? How can you know how you can monitor everything else that you need, KPIs, everything? You cannot really do that because if you do not reconcile, I assure you that you will find a mistake. You're either missing something or you are duplicating something. And it's very, uh, you know, and if you do not categorize it, especially if you're using software, if you're not categorizing that, it's not going to be showing on your report. So you, your numbers are going to be incorrect. Therefore, your decision is going to be incorrect. So let me ask you another question that goes with reconciliation is receipts. You know, keeping mm. receipts, what to keep, what not to keep, you know, they end up in my wallet and they end up crushed in a little ball and then they sit in the sun and then they, they disappear and I can't see anything. <laughs> what receipts should we keep and how should we keep them? Well, keep everything. Every single thing everything. that you're going to put in your books, you should keep. So here's the, an easy way to do it. Like if you're using a software like, for example, like QuickBook, like you said, you can snap them, right? You can snap them into software and just take a picture from your phone. Another good way is like if you're using Google Drive or something, just take a picture even on your phone. Have a file with all these receipts. But like I would say, if you, for example, going for lunch for with someone on business, right? You maybe like um, a partner or maybe you're a client or a prospect. You want to charge this to your business. So it depends on like how it is. Sometimes it's 50% you can charge because you're going to eat anyway, right? Last two years, they allow us to do 100% deduction. So, but you have to write at least on the receipt, like take the receipt because now like they don't give you the receipt unless you want it. <laughs> take it because it's a business expense. Write down who did you go for with and what actually you did in this meeting. What are you hope to accomplish? Just like, you know, prospect, meeting with prospect, or maybe, um, um, for example, like I'm just going to give an example of me meeting with a client. Let's say we're meeting outside for lunch, but we're doing the chart of account, discussing the chart of account, how we want to set it, meeting with this client to do this. And then just keep it on folder month per month and just keep them there. This way it's easy to reconcile. And also, when you um, do your taxes, if if you were selected for audits, you have everything. So you don't lose your deductions. You don't want to lose your deductions just because you do not have anything to support it. Um, I give just going to eat as an example, but because a lot of people miss that and miss how they want to have, like, you know, they need to know exactly what they did on that. But there's this goes with a lot of things for example also um um also like uh, mileage right because you're gonna drive you want to see like how many miles did you drive all of these information so those come can be more complicated than just regular invoices but this is how you want you want to keep every single thing easy things like canva if you're using canva for example or something else you can just save those uh, or you can go back onto your software or whatever software like online you can just keep them just keep them per file you can use like i said like any way to to save them like on your computer and your uh, drive it's easier to have them on a on the cloud so yeah. you can get them anywhere you are <laughs> yeah i know i've done that i was audited before and it was fun they, my irs guy hated me because i was kind of a jerk <laughs> But uh, yeah. imagine that. So, Nora, it's been great. I appreciate everything you did today. If people want to get a hold of you, very quickly, we got about 15 seconds. How do they get a hold of you? So, they just go to my website, norasbooks.com, and they go to contact us. They can book a call with me, um, a free call, and we can talk on Zoom and see if we're a good fit. Awesome, awesome. That's some great stuff. I can't wait to get into more of it next time. 
This is Michael Rager, your business guide here on Now Media Television. We'll be back with more right after this.